Well, if you'd have told me a year ago that I'd become the lead pastor of Access in the middle of a global pandemic like the world has never seen before, with a divisive political climate like the world has never seen before, and with a racially charged climate like the world has never seen before, I might have told Kevin to stick around a little longer. I don't know, but <laughs> no, just kidding. Now, I want to talk to you for a few minutes and I'd simply ask that you stick around until the end. Don't skip around or scroll past, but simply pause and listen to me for a moment. I'm sure you've all heard the news by now, but yesterday Governor Walls issued an executive order mandating face masks for all indoor public spaces in the state of Minnesota. And with that news, we have decided as a church to comply and that until further notice, everyone will be required to wear some sort of face mask or covering for any sort of service or gathering indoors at our facility. If you have children who are five or younger, they will not be required to wear a mask. If you have a health or mental condition that prevents you from wearing a mask, you will not be required to wear one. If you have trouble breathing, you will not be required to wear one. But for the rest of us, masks are now mandatory. And here's what that means for our gatherings. Children in the nursery or preschool will not have to wear masks, but those in the elementary room will. If your children stay with you during the service and they are six or older, they will need to wear a mask. If you volunteer in any capacity, you will need to wear a mask, with the exception of musicians or speakers on stage while they are performing their specific tasks. And listen, if you choose to attend a service and not wear a mask, we cannot physically remove you from the premises, nor would we want to. However, please be aware that we are asking for voluntary compliance in our facility, much like the governor was requesting in his press conference. You should also be aware that wearing a, not wearing a mask is considered a petty misdemeanor with a possible citation and a fine of up to $100. Now, we are not going to be the mask police. I'm simply making you aware of the verbiage in the executive order and fulfilling my responsibility to inform you. That's all. Now, having said all of that, there's a few things I want to share with you regarding this new statewide mask mandate. And the first is my personal opinion. This is not the official position of Access Church, but my personal individual Shaheen Idgahi, free citizen of the United States of America opinion, which I feel obligated to share because hundreds of thousands of men and women have served and given their lives to protect my First Amendment right to free speech. My personal opinion is that I do not agree with this executive order. I believe it's a violation of my civil, li civil liberties and my freedoms. However, because of my relationship with God and the clear instructions found in the New Testament from authors like Paul and Peter, I feel it is my duty and responsibility to voluntarily submit to the authorities above me, even if I don't agree. In fact, the only time submission even matters is when I don't agree. I have the freedom to state my opinion in a respectful manner, but my Christ-centered conscience does not give me the freedom to rebel against authority, at least not in this instance, because wearing a mask ultimately comes down to personal preference. It is not a sin for the governor to require me to wear a mask, and as such, I am compelled to submit to his wishes. You can reference Romans 13 and 1 Peter 2 if you'd like to read about this very thing. Both Paul and Peter wrote their instructions in political climates far worse with far less freedoms than we're experiencing now. And I want to encourage any of you who claim to be Christian to follow their instructions. Voluntarily and respectfully submit to the leadership of our state officials and wear a mask in public indoor spaces. You are honoring God and fulfilling his will for your life by doing this. We have an opportunity to show the world the character of God by how we respond in times like this. So let's make sure our attitudes and actions draw people to God and not repel them. Another thing I want to address is the importance of our in-person gatherings. And listen, we're still going to have an online option. Don't worry about that. But I know the temptation that many of us are going to face is this. If, if masks are required everywhere, then I just won't go anywhere. And many of you will struggle with that as it relates to our weekly services and other in-person gatherings like small groups and night of worship. I want to challenge you not to give in to that line of thinking. 
I know it will be inconvenient for some of us to wear masks. I know it will be uncomfortable for some of us and hard to enforce with our children. I understand all of the objections and how seemingly simple it would be to just not show up until this is all done. But I believe there is something powerful that happens when people gather together to worship God and grow closer to him. Now, I know the church isn't the building, it isn't the services, but we simply cannot deny the fact that God moves in our hearts in a different and powerful way when we gather with others. I was just talking to someone last night about the new mask rules, and he told me that if masks were required, his family wouldn't be attending. But about an hour and a half later, he called me back and apologized. He told me attending church services has always been a part of my family and it will continue to be a part of my family no matter what it looks like. And I hope and pray that you would have that same attitude. Yes, things are going to be different. Yes, things are not how we want them to be. But we don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. We don't neglect the value of corporate worship simply because it's a little more challenging now than it was six months ago. For thousands of years, the people of God have gathered together regularly to worship. In parts of the world still today, followers of Christ gather underground and in secret to worship with consequences far greater than, than we're facing today. And what would it say about our faith and our commitment to unity if we abandoned our meeting together over a simple face mask? Listen, our weekly services, our small groups, our nights of worship, our fellowship with one another is just as important and spiritually vital now as it's ever been. And please, for your own spiritual health, do not isolate, do not pull away. As the author of Hebrews wrote, do not neglect meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. And finally, the last piece I wanna hit is the power of prayer. Wherever you stand politically, wherever you stand on the mask issue, wherever you stand on any issue facing our world right now, we have an incredible supernatural tool at our disposal, prayer. We have a direct connection to the God of all creation and we ought to seek him now more than ever. All of the changes that have come in the last four or five months have divided us as a country and even divided the church of Jesus Christ. And I have no doubt in my mind that it is the enemy behind it all. We have a real enemy, Satan, who is hell-bent on destroying our lives, our world, and especially the church of Jesus Christ. And all of the controversies and problems facing our culture are not just surface-level issues. As Paul wrote to the Ephesians, we are not fighting against flesh and blood. We're, we're fighting spiritual warfare. We're, we're fighting against an evil spiritual enemy. And knowing that, we ought to pray with all the fervor and passion we can possibly muster. Pray for our government officials. Pray that they would know God through Jesus Christ and that they would lead wisely. Pray for our frontline workers, both in the medical field and the law enforcement field. I mean, they are facing stress at their jobs that you and I cannot even imagine. Pray for the truth to be revealed in all situations. Pray for all Christians that we would be a light in the darkness, a force for good in the world, an example to the world that is attractive and appealing. And pray most of all that God's will would be done. Whatever that looks like, whatever role you and I have in it, pray that his kingdom would come on earth as it is in heaven. Now, I know this sounds weird to say in a time like this, but I truly am excited for our future together as a church. And I have no idea what things are going to look like even next week. But I know that as we commit to God and to each other, we will see God move in our midst. And that gives me hope. Thanks for sticking around to the end of this video. And I hope that you have something to ponder over the next few days as you spend time with God. God bless. Hope to see you on Sunday.